Hey guys, in today's video I'm taking you along with me on quite a busy day full of school, taking the train home, and then taking the driving theory test. My day starts nice and early at about 5.30am. It's relatively easy to wake up because it's so light outside and the thought of my morning coffee definitely gets me out of bed. I go to a boarding school where the kitchen is locked overnight so I can't make cold brew here so I treat myself to a hot coffee with hazelnut milk. This type of milk doesn't really have to stay in the fridge and it is very nice and creamy. The perfect early morning coffee. After I get the energy spike, I decide to get on with the work. If I got out of bed this early, I am not wasting the time scrolling through my phone. Here I'm doing a plan for chemistry practical we're going to be doing later on today. And spoiler alert, the practical did not go well. In case anyone was wondering, I actually have no idea what I'm doing right now. I want to sleep. I have to finish a write-up for this chemistry practical. And like, I just don't know what they want me to say in this. Like, everything is just kind of all over the place. And you know, I'm like ever so slightly worried because my driving theory test is today. And I read five chapters out of 12. I read them. I haven't done practice questions on them. I read them. Can you tell that I'm stressed? <laughs> Like a lot of people revise the night before and I'm just like, okay, yeah, that's fine. But I forgot that I also have prep to do. I guess I'm just gonna have to like wing driving theory. <laughs> yeah, this is just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'm just gonna hope that the person I'm doing the experiment with has a better write-up than I do. <laughs> so otherwise, I'm just gonna mess everything up. <laughs> okay, chemistry, I'm procrastinating. After copying the plan from the physics and math tutor, I catch up on a biology lesson that I missed because of my math exam. We're also doing an investigation in biology, so I really needed to know what was going on. Here you can observe my head trying to fight gravity, but eventually it gives in and I lie on the table. You know, bio, bio A level manages me to, to surprise me every time. The question asks, the behavior of the herbivores in having their heads up has a benefit, but it also has a cost. The benefit is being able to see and escape from predators. Suggest and explain one cost to the herbivores of this behavior. This question is about data analysis. Why am I asked? Like literally what they're asking is, why is it bad for, for animals who eat plants to have their head up? I don't know. Their neck hurts? <laughs> we haven't learned about this. Like, I don't know. I can't think of anything why why it's bad to keep their head up. I don't know. They can't see where they're walking. Their neck hurts. Their head is heavy. Well, I guess they can't feed. If their heads are up, then they can't feed. Would that, is that a cost though? I'm done with biology. But I want to sleep. It's 7:30, um, so I have like 10 or 15 minutes for my for driving theory, just a little bit, and then I need to get ready for school. I brush my teeth, wash my face, and put on cream and sunscreen. Fun fact: more people die from skin cancer caused by tanning than from lung cancer caused by smoking. Think about that. I then put on a t-shirt, jeans, and a blazer that we have to wear as part of our school uniform. I also have a lanyard with a card that lets me into buildings, and I wouldn't want to forget that. And the most important attribute of the season, a mask. Very trendy, you should wear one. My friend then grabs me and we go to breakfast. I didn't film anything, but I always stay true to my origins, so I had eggs with bacon. I then make my way to form time, normally a 30 minute lesson where we sit and chat and do quizzes. But on Fridays, instead of form time, we have to go to house meetings. Houses work similarly to Hogwarts but not nearly as exciting. So after grabbing my monthly supply of lateral flow tests from my form teacher, I make my way to the house base, the room where we have our house meetings. Two of my friends are actually house captains, so today they were introducing their idea for house dance, an inter-house competition. About house bands, um, which is our next and also our very first house challenge of the year. Go, go, go. Can I quickly run and get my goggles? <laughs> I can quickly run. Yeah, I can. <laughs> After forgetting my goggles, I aggressively attempt to dissolve some powders in some distilled water, preparing to carry out a series of tests on them to identify which powder is which compound. 
You can't see my face in this, but I'm absolutely panicking inside because I thought we were going to do it in pairs like most other practicals, and my friend next to me seemed to be doing very well, which wasn't helping my anxiety. Oh, ease. After a meeting with the headmistress at break, I go to my next lesson, biology. Today we were doing an investigation in small groups trying to find if different light intensity affects the length of ivy leaves. So we walked around the school site, listening to music and reminiscing the times when we were little children. Wait, am I gonna be here too? Wait, what tag or do you want? Chemistry practical went absolutely. I literally had no idea what I'm doing. And we worked like individually. Oh, and the thing is, this is a PAG. If you've never done A-level science, then you don't know what a PAG is, but it's like a, it's a practical that is assessed. And it's not going well, like, I don't know. Um, it says that, um, I don't know, this chloride forms white precipitate. And then I check and I literally have three cream precipitates, two white precipitates, and three of them are brown. And I'm just like, I'm literally doing everything by instructions. There's nothing to mess up. You dissolve it in distilled water and then you add like, I don't know, sodium hydroxide and then you see what happens. I now have a little bit of free time uh, because the way lunch works in school for sixth form for us is like we can either get early lunch, so it's takeaway lunch, we get it like a little cardboard box at 11.45. So that only works if you don't have a lesson before lunch. And there's a sit down lunch option at 1.05 and lessons start at 1.25. So I have like 15, 20 ish minutes to eat my lunch. Instead of going to lunch, I ate some leftover pecking duck that I made last night. Please excuse the serving and the cutting of cucumbers. The boarding school doesn't allow sharp knives, but it tasted good and that's what matters. I was talking to my friend, so I didn't go to lunch. And now I'm late to my physics lesson. <laughs> why am I recording this when I'm late? Like, this is a good question. I don't know why, because I'm really late. In physics, we finally started a new topic called quantum physics after learning mechanics for the entire year. And I'm not gonna lie, I was really excited to finally move on from forces and energies, but you can probably see the confusion in my face when the teacher says that the darkness of a certain part of the photo depends on the probability of light particles hitting that part. In an attempt to comprehend all of this, I decided to ask a question, but I'm so confused I can't even construct one properly. Oh, I thought that like with the camera, it's like the things that don't, like on the right bottom, it's because something is too far away. So it's like it doesn't get to the camera on time. Like I thought that's why it's darker if you... We then started preparing for a practical I didn't even know we were going to do today. Investigating Planck's constant. Don't ask me what that is because I still don't really know. But I'm not complaining because the colors we observed are very, very pretty and the task was fairly simple. but I ordered an Uber because I have to go to Bristol Parkway station and I have no idea how to get there by bus so I'll just have to take the Uber and waste my money After having a very nice conversation with a taxi driver who seemed to be very passionate about the price of train tickets I finally get onto the train I normally pretend that I'm 15 to get the tickets half price when I buy tickets online, but here I had to buy them in person and they asked for an ID so I unfortunately had to pay the full price. The train was absolutely packed, presumably because the other station in Bristol wasn't working. After almost losing faith in finding another seat, I settled in for a first class seat, hoping that no one would ask me for a ticket. And then, everything goes wrong. I was supposed to be getting off at Reading, but for some reason the train stopped at Didcot Parkway, somewhere it wasn't supposed to stop. 
and I was scared that I wouldn't get off the train in time, so I rushed out without checking the name of the station. After panicking for a little bit after realizing that I'm not on the correct station, I thought that I can take another train, but the next one was in one hour. I then think this is only one station away from Reading, so I can take an Uber there. But guess what, there's no Uber in the area, so after panicking even more, I set up for a taxi which ended up being an hour drive, and trust me, it was ridiculously expensive. The driver comforted me though, and helped me with the driving theory that I was trying to go through. Missing a train may not seem like a massive problem to you, but the reason I took it so closely to heart was because it was my own mistake that led me to the situation, and I was putting extra pressure on myself by saying, you wasted so much money today, you better pass your driving theory test. I also felt very bad for spending so much money because I hate spending money, and here it felt like I was just throwing it under the bus. During the hour long drive, I do mock tests on the driving theory practice app, and out of the five I did, I passed none. So very encouraged by these results, I go in and do the test. Oh my god, guys, I passed it. Wait, how do you open this door? <laughs> I passed it, oh my god. It's all worth it. I don't know where my mom is now though, but... <sighs> oh my god. Guys, I'm like so happy right now. Literally, I was so scared and stressed about this. And for my the like basically, if you don't know, the car driving theory consists of multiple choice questions and hazard perception. For multiple choice, you have to get 43 out of 50. And for all the mock tests that I did in the taxi, I got like 39. So it's like I didn't pass any of them. And I got 47. So here's the thing, I passed the test. You would have already seen my reaction because like I was waiting for my mom to come so I filmed my reaction. So you would have already seen it, but I am so relieved. In the in the previous day in the life, I studied for two for an hour. I learned two chapters out of 14. I haven't done any driving theory since then because literally like the next day I found out that I have to do my math A level and I just gave up on all the driving that I had to do. But I literally started revising this lunch. I'm not even joking right now, but I'm just so relieved. And I was doing it with my with my dad as well. And my dad doesn't speak English, so I don't know how he passed, but he passed as well. So we celebrated. And my older bro passed his motor 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 motorcycle motorcycle license or whatever, and he got a freaking motorcycle. Yeah. Oh God, I'm. So so happy right now i'm so dead but i can literally legally drive now with someone who's over 21 and had their license for one or two years like literally i can drive legally i'm so excited to edit this like the emotional roller coaster of today god after a nice dinner with my family, sharing our experiences and thoughts, I decide to offload the bouquet of emotions onto my diary, and then go to sleep at around 10.30, absolutely dead from everything that happened. I hope that you enjoyed my day in life. Don't forget to comment and like for the YouTube algorithm. Have an amazing rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.